Uh, what I want to show you now is um, an advanced use for clip envelopes. Um, now, clip envelopes can be used directly on a clip. So, for example, if you listen to this drum loop, it's possible using a clip envelope to, um, for example, mute certain sections of the loop. So, if I just like the kick and the snare in there, I can remove all the hi hats by drawing in a clip envelope. And I'm just left with the kick and the snare out of the loop. What I want to do is use clip envelopes to generate effect automation on an effect such as uh, a beat repeat. So oh, we can all have a lot of fun with a beat repeat, but sometimes the outcome of the, uh, the twiddling of the parameters can be a little bit haphazard and can't always sound great. Um, but what we can do is we can program in clip automation to control uh, the beat repeat and we get desired results. We know what we're going to get. So how do we achieve this? Well, the first thing uh, I want to do is to create a new audio track. And I'm going to send the output of the audio track that's got my tunes on to this second audio track. And I'm going to turn the monitor button to in. I'm just going to rename this, uh, we'll call it beat repeat, so there's no confusion. And uh, let's set up um, a beat repeat on there, and then we can start to design our dummy clips, which are, are going to contain our, our automation. So the first thing we're going to do is drop a blank audio effects rack onto my beat repeat track. And straight away, drop a beat repeat effect in there. Next, I'm going to create a blank chain. So um, we've got one chain for dry signal, and then we've got one chain for wet signal, which is going to be our beat repeat effect. So again, just to avoid any confusion, call the first one beat repeat that's got the beat repeat effect on it, and the second one I'm just going to call dry. Right, now let's have a look at um, the macro controls. I'm just going to map a few things out to the macro controls that you get with uh, every audio effects rack. The first thing I'm going to map out are the track activator switches for both the chains. Now when you're in map mode, um, either in MIDI map mode or in map mode that um, you get with the audio effects rack for the macro controls, if you open the browser you can actually set maximum and minimum values in the browser for the different parameters that you've got mapped out to your macro controls. So, I'm just setting values here so that when I draw in values um, in my. <laughs> Hello, mate. Sorry. Hello. I was just it. Yeah. So, just uh, um, I'll put it on silent mode and I'll throw it in. Oh, okay, yeah. Sorry about that. I've only seen Rob from here, haven't I? Um, Sorry? Where do, you want, where do you want to go from there? Um, now or get back I, I mean, it's, yeah, if you, I'll just, I'll, I'll I'll just carry on from there, if that's all right. Yeah, and yeah, then sure, just splice that shit together. Yeah, yeah. Um, where was I? So I set maximum minimum values. Um, in the browser window for the dry signal and the wet signal. This will become more useful when we start to draw in um, our automation data onto our dummy clip. Um, I'm also going to map out uh, the repeat section on the beat repeat to a macro control and also the grid section to a macro control as well. Again, with the grid parameter, I'm going to set useful values for the grid within um, within the browser window, the grid is how quickly uh, the sound's going to repeat when the beat repeats activated. So I'm going to set it minimum value of sixteenth and a maximum value of a third of a bar. So that's all the mappings I'm going to make. I'm going to come out of map mode. I'm just going to turn the beat repeat onto insert. 
pull these values down. So now we can start to write our dummy automation. We'll first need to get a, a dummy clip from somewhere. Um, well, a dummy clip can be any audio clip. Um, you know, so I've just copied that drum loop across onto my beat repeat channel, but even though it's got audio on it, when I fire that clip off, we're not going to be able to hear that audio because previously I've set the beat repeat track monitor button to in. Right, so I've just renamed that first control, first macro control, wet and dry, um, just to make it a bit e easier to find when we're looking for it in the clip envelope section. So, uh, dummy clip. All I've done is copied across um, my drum loop that I had before and I've turned the gain right down. Now remember, um, because this um, audio track has, has its monitor button set to in, the audio track is only going to be listening to its uh, input, which in this case is audio track number one, rather than any clip which is playing on the beat repeat track. So let's draw in some automation uh, and let's get an effect going. Well, the first thing to note um, is that whatever automation we draw in, in a clip envelope uh, is relative to the controls that have already been set uh, on the effect that we've got on the track. So I'm just going to turn up all the macro controls that I've mapped out, and then uh, any automation data that we draw on a onto a clip envelope will be relative to these values rather than being absolute values. So I'm just going to rename this first clip dry. We want initially uh, a dry effect, and then we can start to program in our beat repeats. So from the clip envelope section, select the beat repeat audio effects route which we've made, and initially the first control for a dry signal, make sure the wet dry control is set all the way to dry, because I've just drawn in values there. So that when I play my tune, there's obviously no effect. I'm just going to copy this dummy clip down, um, and we'll call this uh, thirds. And now let's draw in the automation for this one. So obviously because we want this to be affected, we want the wet dry control set all the way to wet, so we'll draw that in. For the grid command, well remember the um, any automation that I draw in is relative to the value that's already been set. It's been set as a third, so I don't need to draw any automation data in there. And thirdly, on the repeat section, again, I've got repeat set all the way around to 127. The only thing I need to do is just take that first little notch out there. I'm going to play the song. I'm going to trigger off the uh, second dummy clip I just made there, which is the automation data, so that the sound will repeat in values of a third of a bar. And then go back to the dry signal. So that's our first dummy clip done. First dummy piece of automation. I'm going to copy that down again, and we'll set a different value of a bar. This time we'll go for six. So all I need to do to change here, to get my sixth, is to go to the grid section. I'm going to come out of draw mode, go into pointer mode. I'm just going to pull down the grid value until it reads sixth on the beat repeat in the track view. So now we've got thirds. And then we've got six. And we can keep going with that. I'm going to copy it down one more time. And let's make uh, eight. So I'm going to rename that eight. And that one, all we have to do is move the grid line until it says eight. So got the dry, the third.
thirds, the sixths, and the eighths. So that's using dummy clips to fire off quantized values of automation to make your effects sound a little bit more regimented.